let's just get right into it. In this video, we're going to talk about how to get more traffic, more conversions, and more clients from Google search in 2021 and beyond. And what you're going to find from going through this journey with me is that I'm a practitioner. Not only am I going to present you with real life examples from our clients, but from our own businesses as well, that we've grown into multi-million dollars in revenue using these exact same practices. We eat, breathe, and sleep B2B marketing, and I truly believe that we are the best in the world at it. So stick around to the end. I promise you this will be a teach tape on how to market your business in Google this year and in the future. Let's get into it. I want to start with this quote because Google is in an epic battle for internet market share, not only with other search engines, but Facebook, with TikTok, with Instagram, with all these other platforms that are not only vying for the customer's attention, but vying for you as a business owner's attention for how you can market and acquire your customers. The quote says 89% of prospects use search engines during the B2B research process. And again, I wanted to put this in here because I want to remind you of the importance and the impact and the power of search. And one of the biggest knocks on SEO right now that we get from our prospects as we're going through the sales process is that SEO is unpredictable. But in reality, it's really not when you compare it to other platforms. Not sure if any of you are advertising on Facebook, which you absolutely should be, but iOS 14 just rolled out and caused a massive crap storm when it came to tracking, when it came to ads, when it came to pretty much everything in the space. Really blew things up and caused chaos for a lot of advertisers, especially the ones doing it at scale. You look at something like LinkedIn, the cost to acquire someone off of LinkedIn is crazy how expensive it is. The point I'm trying to make is all these platforms are constantly going through their own battles on their own. And when you compare it to the status of SEO right now, Google is announcing their algorithm updates ahead of time. Mobile Geddon, Core Web Vitals, uh, literally launched almost a year and ahead of time to let people prepare and prepare their, their platforms and their websites to adjust to these massive algorithmic changes that are coming. Of course, Google's always releasing algorithm updates unannounced, but if you're just doing things the right way, if you're just following best practices that Google gives you, SEO is really not that complicated. And that's a huge challenge that a lot of you B2B business owners face that you're constantly inundated with SEO agencies, throwing all these different tactics and strategies at you. And it deters you and it clogs your thinking from focusing on larger strategic initiatives that we're really going to cover here, right? Because like, like I said, at the end of the day, SEO is pretty much a checklist. Now you don't have to do that much to get the results that you need. You just need to know how the nuances in SEO that's not covered in all the blog posts that you see online to attack SEO right now. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. I'm going to give you the strategy that's working so well right now in the past and in the future for us and our clients in the B2B space. And of course, I got to start with a little bit of social proof to show you why I'm qualified to talk about this subject. This is actually a screenshot from our agency's website, Webers. This is organic traffic. We practice what we preach here. Like I said, we don't just do this for clients. We do it for ourselves. And you'd be hard pressed to find another agency in the world that's as good as marketing ourselves as they are their clients, just like we are. And you can see here, beautiful thing about SEO is that it's like a tidal wave. It just continues to grow over time after you built the foundation and then you get into the core repeatable processes, which is really content and promotion, you get this tidal wave effect that keeps growing without more input. Unlike something like Facebook ads, where you've got to be constantly staying ahead of creative, changing things, uh, adjusting copy. And then also too, scaling an ad account is really hard. You don't just go from 25K to 50K to 100K using the same strategy. You constantly have to adapt your strategies in order to grow. It's the opposite with, with SEO. You put in most of your work up front and you reap the benefits on the back end. It's the opposite than any other platform out there. And it's that's one of the reasons why it's so, so powerful because it grows in perpetuity without putting in more direct input. Another screenshot from the same website, just wanted to show you, this is our uh, MQLs is just marketing qualified lead. This is just what we call a booked website analysis or a macro conversion on our, our agency's website. Uh, this is from last month. You can see we had about 50 leads come in last month and pretty much 70% of them came from organic search. Direct is usually organic search, just untagged or untracked. Um, so you can see here that a large majority of our leads, not just traffic, are also coming from uh, Google organic search. Another one that I love to show, this is actually from one of our clients who we had to keep private, but uh, another knock that we get to, especially in the B2B space, is how long SEO can take. And I get it. It does take time. However, 
with the right strategies and the right approach, you can get quick turnarounds. This is an example of a blog post that we published, a blog post for one of our clients, um, you know, published here in December, and then in January picked up almost 500 visits and now doing about 600, 700 visits from organic search. But more importantly, it's generated six leads, right? So we're not just picking up traffic for one page, we're picking up leads from that page. And more importantly, this is just one post. We try to publish between four and six posts per month for clients or help our clients to publish that much content. So again, we start to stack this and it becomes a tidal wave. So we're getting these quick wins by attacking the right opportunities and then stacking the long-term growth. And it just gets very, very, very lethal when you do this. Another screenshot from our client, CRM.org. They are a B2B publisher. They talk about CRMs and tech. And um, this is just <laughs> a massive amount of traffic that we've been able to drive for them. We got them almost up to 100,000 organic visits per month. Uh, and then also all the lead forms that came off the back of this. And these are advertising requests. They sell advertising space to B2B publishers. Um, we help them drastically not only increase traffic, but increase their amount of ad revenue sold on the website as well all from following the exact same strategy that I've covered in all the previous screenshots in this one as well. This one is actually from our uh, training and coaching company, The Blueprint Training. We help digital agencies improve their processes, get more customers, the whole nine. What you can see here is a comparison guide year over year, how we've increased our organic traffic here, uh, over 72% in revenue, uh, over 65% all from organic traffic. Again, following the exact same process that we followed for all the websites that I showed you before. So with that being said, hopefully now you trust me a little bit to take you on this journey and show you and coach you a little bit on this system and on this process. So real quick, I just want to talk about why your SEO is not working. So number one, it's probably because you're approaching SEO in a silo. And this is very common, right? Um, people, especially agencies, do not usually push integrated marketing strategies and it's the wrong thing to do and they're not doing what's best by you by doing so right if you're hiring an agency to do seo and ads and content and social that's fine right different agencies different specialties and different people have different specialties as well but what you need to understand is how these channels integrate together because what can happen is if you're looking at seo as a direct lead channel right like oh uh, organic search isn't driving any leads or last year so we're just going to cancel it and we're not going to work on it anymore because it's a waste of time it's the wrong way to do it because you have to understand how these channels work together to push each other forward. And this is incredibly true, especially in the B2B space where you need so much content to have success, right? 89% of searchers are using search engines during the journey. That doesn't mean they're going right to Google and booking. Like it's not like they're necessarily like, uh, you know, they got a hole in their floor and they need to call someone to fix it right away. It's a process. So content needs to be seen as a nurturing process. And that means a lot of your content will not be a last touch point for generating leads, but actually a first touch point, right? It's a point of discovery. It's where people are coming into the website, right? So if you're just looking at SEO as just a lead source and you're not looking at it, how it feeds other channels, for example, right? We look at SEO. This is for our blueprint website, for our blueprint company as a means to build our audiences, right? Think about it this way, right? If you've got a ton of really great content on the website that people are searching keywords for, you know exactly what they're searching for, meaning you know exactly who they are, you know exactly what they're thinking. And then you're using that to build your remarketing lists across your ad platforms. This is from Facebook, right? Is that now we can really, really hone in on that intent. So if they're all coming in from blog posts, and I'll talk more about our content strategy that are talking about a specific cluster of things, we can hit them with very specific remarketing ads with very specific offers. So our cost per customer acquisition goes way down. Our advertising costs go way down. But if you're not seeing that, if you're not understanding and nurturing that relationship and fostering that ecosystem, then you're taking money out of your own pocket. So I want you to start thinking about the true role of search in your company and how you can push that into your ecosystem going forward. This is another really impactful one, especially with growing B2B companies. You're completely reliant on outside help, meaning agencies or consultants for your marketing or a single internal person who's completely overwhelmed. Look, uh, I run an agency, so I'll be the first to tell you firsthand that agencies are important and we serve our place, but agencies are better for short-term project-based single time tasks, right? Like an audit or maybe designing a web page, something like that. But when it comes to ongoing recurring tasks, content marketing, uh, link building, those things should really ha have some sort of ownership internally. Because if you're completely relying on an agency to do all that stuff, that's repeatable, right? Especially content, which is core to your brand. You have to be doing that internally. You can work with an agency to help you to strategize or you know help with overflow and execution or consulting on that level. But you got to have somebody internally who's dedicated to content. Otherwise, uh, you're going to 
be leaving all your IP outside. And if you know that agency leaves or raise the rates and you're screwed, you have to start all over again and everything falls apart, right? Or on the flip side of the coin, if you have someone and you're not providing them the right help, coaching, training, and support, then there's just way too much to do in SEO alone, let alone all the other marketing tasks that they probably have on their plate too, right? So what we need to do is reframe your understanding of when and how to use agencies. And I'm going to show you through this, as we go throughout this process, the proper relationship and what you should have internally versus what you should be leveraging an agency for. This is one that I alluded to before. This is just a screenshot. If you just Google B2B SEO, um, you know, you'll see that it's pretty much all the same information. And it's not bad information. It's, it's good information. It's not wrong information, but good isn't good enough for me. And it's not good enough for my business. And I know it's got not good enough for yours either. And that's why you're here. If you really want to scale your company, you have to be going above and beyond. You got to do great. You got to be best in class, right? It's not good enough to just be good. We got to be leaders, right? Especially again, how important content is. We need to turn you, your company into a thought leader. And we do that through content. We do that through content promotion, getting in front of the right audiences. So that's a perfect segue into why you're here, which is to talk about our very simple three things that you can do for your B2B website to generate more leads from organic search and other channels as well, if I'm being honest. This is not some generic cracker box strategy. This is something that we do every single day, not only for our clients, but for our own businesses. And I'm gonna peel back the curtain and show you exactly what a lot of this looks like in practice. So let's jump on in. The first thing I wanna talk about is your website. Now, a lot of SEO agencies will go into things like intent and page mapping and things like that. I want to strip it down <laughs> because in order for a tree to grow, sometimes we got to cut back the branches. And when we go in and we audit a lot of B2B websites, we find that they're just bloated. Um, they're just not organized properly. So I want to do is provide you the simplest, 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 simplest stripped down website. We call it the five page website. So I'm going to run you through uh, everything that I like to include within this framework. So what we're going to talk about is slightly outside the scope of SEO. I'd call this more UX, a little bit of design, but it's super important to have the architecture. And also too, if we're talking about conversions, right? This, this, this video is to talk to you about conversions, not just traffic. We can't help you get more conversions if we can't impact and influence the content and what it looks like in the design and the layouts, because it's a super important part of reducing friction from traffic to turn them into customers, but also understanding again, what pages do you need? to generate the most amount of traffic and generate the most amount of leads to feed your sales team and just have them constantly calling on people that want to talk to them. Well, it starts with your homepage, right? Uh, so your homepage is number one, uh, some sort of results page uh, where it's just everything that you do for customers, all the results that you've gotten them, case studies, testimonials, awards, all that we want to put on a page as well. A macro conversion page. So this is what I like to call your uh, like booking page or whatever, whatever mechanism or page that you offer that you use to take them from traffic into becoming a marketing or sales lead. That's the macro conversion page blog. Um, so the ones that I have, the three that I have in green, these are, these are, you absolutely have to have these. There's absolutely no exception. The ones that I have in yellow are maybes, but also you definitely need to have these too. Uh, so a blog somewhere that we can publish content. We'll talk a little bit more about that a micro conversion page. So if macro conversion is taking traffic into a sales lead, uh, a micro conversion is going to be something like a webinar, an ebook, some mechanism that someone to take traffic into capturing their information, email, potentially phone number, uh, before they're ready to become a lead. And this is also what we call like a front end offer. So we'll be running this uh, on Facebook ads. We'll run this on LinkedIn ads on Twitter ads, um, turn this into a webinar and just using it as a gated piece of content to again, begin to broker that conversation. Also give our salespeople some other people to call on and contact if their full pipeline is a little bit dry about page, uh, also important. And then services pages. We're going to talk a little bit more about service pages and why I'm not overly hot on them and why I don't think that you need them. So we'll get into that as we go through this. So I'm going to go through and illustrate this with our coaching consulting company, the blueprint training. Uh, we help SEO agencies, uh, really build better processes and, and just scale their business through a lot of different kind of coaching tactics. So this is the homepage here. A couple of key things here is that this is the most visited page, right? So what we want to do is we want to treat this as such uh, a place that we can really drive home, uh, a couple of key elements. Number one is a very clear hook and call to action for what we do. So very simple, we help agencies scale with a simple framework. Our three-part framework has generated millions of dollars in revenue for agencies, consultants, and freelance marketers. This is very clear, uh, in my opinion, I used to tell you exactly what we do, but also to get you excited, right? I'm not here sitting you saying, hey, we do SEO, or hey, we do this. Uh, I'm telling you about the output of what we do for people, right? Like what, 
outcome can you expect from partnering with us, right? I'm not telling you what we do. And this is why, again, I'm already starting to see this conversation about why I don't love service pages, um, because this is a marketing conversation. Our job as marketers is to get people excited. And when they get excited, what do they do? They take action. So I either want them to take action on seeing our framework, seeing our results, or ultimately getting started and booking that sales conversation. So what I'm trying to do here is drive people into this framework, which is our uh, micro conversion, which I'll show you in a second by getting them excited, by telling them we help agency scale with our framework. Hey, you want to see the framework? Check it out. It's right here. Um, so a clear hook, uh, call out to prospective clients. So after that hook, I like to go into just very kind of high level about the service that you offer, right? Uh, again, I just kind of seeded about how I don't love product pages, but we still want to have some sort of explanation about what it is that they can expect uh, from working with us. What will they get in return in terms of a service from working with us, right? So this is just a very kind of high level Usually it's use like process diagrams here. Again, I don't love service pages. You can just kind of list out what it is that you do. Uh, but again, this is just kind of like, hey, this is a big call to action. This is the outcome of what you can expect. Here's a little bit about how we help you achieve that on the homepage, right? Uh, and then just as many client results as possible. Uh, we got some testimonials here. Also got some video testimonials and then it links to our more results page. Uh, you know, a little bit about me, the founder of the company, a little about you, the founder of the company, a little about the team can go here as well. Um, again, just kind of like, who is actually going to be helping you and why are they qualified to help you to solve this problem? Again, just more social proof here in terms of logos. Um, here's our team here. Again, same thing. And then a big call to action at the bottom to book a conversation. This links directly to our macro conversion page. So that's the home page there. Again, we really want to cover clear hook, call to action, social proof, a little bit about what you do. And that's pretty much it, right? I, again, I'm trying to help you streamline and visualize here. Um, not so much the SEO elements, but the conversion elements. If somebody comes to the website in the home page too, is going to have a large mix of people who are have been to the website before and have never been to the website before. So you got to kind of put on that hat and understand what's the happy medium to help people understand whether they're new here uh, or whether they've been here 50 times. How do we help them navigate to ultimately where we want them to be, which is up here. We want to have them have a conversation with us. That's really the only thing that matters. That's why we have a website. It's to drive conversions. It's to take people, get them excited through our copy, through our content, and ultimately convince them that we are the best opportunity that they have to solve the problems that we've been talking about all, all across our website. So the next page is going to be the results page. This to me is probably the most important page on the website because this is where we showcase um, all of our social proof, uh, all the customers that we've helped and worked with, all the problems that we solved. Let's jump over and take a live look. So as you can see, as we go down this, um, but really this is just a, 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 a testimonial mashup video. We got a bunch of testimonials in there. We then got a bunch of screenshots. This is from our Slack channel of people just kind of promoting us, um, talking about how much results they've gotten, talking about how much they liked us, uh, all this great stuff. Um, then we get down here. This is just kind of call to action for our podcast, a little bit more social proof, just like, Hey, we've got other content too. You can check it out. Uh, just more kind of like testimonials and Twitter monials from social media. Here's a link to the book that we wrote, right? Again, like more social proof, more accolades. Here's a bunch of different video testimonials that we have from customers, emails that we've gotten from customers, um, reviews that we've gotten on Google, right? So there's a good place to put any reviews, trust pilot, a link to our Slack channel for you to join our Slack channel. Uh, more reviews. These are coming from Facebook more social proof talking about how many views we've gotten on YouTube. And then of course, finalizing with that call to action at the bottom. So hopefully by going through this page, you know, even if you're not an SEO agency, you're still pretty intrigued and excited about potentially working with us because why? Because we don't just talk the talk, we walk the walk, right? And when you've got this type of results, and I know that you do, you just got to think a little bit differently about how you can dig and how you can mine these type of results from your business. Uh, and that way you can showcase and display. So it's not just about case studies. It's not just about, you know, the results It's also like anywhere that somebody's talking about you positively, let's capture that and let's push it all on this page and have this be our main source of social proof that we can send out as sales collateral, um, that we can send out as mid funnel advertisements, right on Facebook, uh, or on LinkedIn. Social proof is key. It's really what helps people make a decision and drive them to action. So the more of it that we can get and the more we can centralize it on one page, the better that you're going to be. So the next page up is just our, our macro conversion page. Um, some key elements that I like to put here. I like to have a direct just calendar um, to book directly with your, your sales team on here. Uh, we got rid of forms because we found out that it was an extra step. Um, and this also will you know collect their email and do what we needed to do. But as opposed to collecting an email and then having to send an email to schedule, or uh, send an automated email to try and schedule, this is just a lot more direct. This is just gonna help you 
book more of what you're trying to book. Um, so you can just embed that directly on the page. We've got some FAQs here. Um, you know, we've got some more testimonials here. So some other things that you can put on here would be like, um, you know, what to expect. I can show you our agency website. Some more things that you can put here. This is our agency website. You know, again, call booking with our sales team, what to expect from the call, right? So, you know, this is an offer at the end of the day, right? We want to entice people. We want to understand, make sure that they understand that we're not just trying to sell them something, but they're getting a benefit from this, right? So a free analysis, agency strategy session, we're going to help you out on this call to uncover, and we're going to talk about your problems. We're going to offer you solutions on the call, right? I'm a big believer in openness, transparency, giving as much information to people as possible to help them make the decision. Um, you know, at the end of the day, they're coming to you because they're not going to do it themselves. So you can tell them all the information that they want just like you're here right now. Like I'm going to tell you all this information and I know that you're not going to do it. We're probably going to have a sales conversation if you get through this entire video. Same mindset, same mentality here. Tell them what to expect, help them on the call and you know, let your sales team do their thing, let them sell. So the next page on here um, is the blog posts, right? So this is a place again, where we can publish content. Um, this is a blog post that we have on the blueprint training all about agency positioning. We've got a pretty specific template that we follow when we build websites for our clients, um, helps it super clean, high converting, uh, and again, driving towards a singular call to action. This is one of our micro conversions on this website here. So on this website, we have two micro conversions, right? We have this framework page. This is pushing a webinar uh, that basically just showcases how we run our framework, how we help our clients, literally just telling them everything is just filled with social proof and pushing them to opt in here. We've also got uh, another micro one uh, where we give away uh, an SEO project plan. So we have two offers on the back end. We have a coaching consulting offer, which is what this framework is for, right? So this webinar is going to be much more focused on solving business and strategy problems. And then we've also got a training pro platform that's just focused on teaching people how to do SEO for clients. And that's what this offer is for. So we're sending them the project plan uh, in exchange for their email. And then we actually have a sales conversation with them after that to sell them on the platform, the program. So those are the two micro offers. Super, super, super important. Um, again, they serve as a mechanism to capture information before people are actually ready. Another page too. About page, right? Pretty straightforward. Our agency page is probably even a little bit better. This is also a B2B website. Just talks kind of about our, you know, our thoughts, our ethos, uh, our people. And again, just kind of some more accolades that we have at our agency. And what I want you to take notice too is how simple our website structures are. So homepage, our process page. So this is our service page for the agency. Um, it just talks a little bit more in detail about what our services are and what they entail. Um, again, I don't think you necessarily need services pages. If you'll notice here on the blueprint too, we don't have that. We have framework, we have results, we've got some more stuff. We've got this, our get started page. It's very simple. It's very stripped down. It's very straightforward. It's very conversion focused as you can see, right? We don't have any pages on here that talk about what our products actually entail. And the reason is we want to be focused on selling the whole and not the shovel. So what that means is we want to be focused on where our target customer is, the problems that they're having and how we're going to take them to where they want to be, right? And where they want to be is the outcome. That's what we want our website to focus on. It's all outcome based here. Whenever we're doing B2P, especially high ticket B2B, we have got to invoke emotion in people. Showing them what you do for a service invokes no type of emotion. Why? Because there's a million other websites that are doing the exact same thing. And then you're stuck competing based on service as opposed to outcome, as opposed to result, as opposed to that feeling, that emotion that they'll get when you help them to solve their problem. That doesn't matter if you're an attorney, right? Helping somebody to uh, free themselves of a case. Imagine if you've ever been through a lawsuit, how much stress, how much anxiety that you're feeling. If you can communicate where they are, that stress and anxiety that they're feeling with that case that's looming over their head to where they want to be. That's what you want to talk about, right? And then that's the marketing conversation. It's like, okay, now I see how you, let's, now I want to talk to you and call you about it. And when you're on the call, it's a sales conversation to talk about your services, right? It's a marketing conversation to get people excited, outcome-based. Of course, you can support with services. I'm not telling you not to put service pages. I'm just trying to sell you on this model here of outcome-based copywriting and outcome-based content. Uh, that's the marketing side of it. Get them excited, get them to take action. And then when they're on the phone with you, when they're talking to your sales team or however you run your sales process, that's when you can say, okay, yes, we tell me more about your problems. Yes, we can help you help, help you alleviate those problems. Here's how we'll do it. Here's what's included in what you're paying us for, right? Here's how we come up with our costs. It's a sales conversation. You don't have to waste website space talking about it because when you do that, 
that when you talk about your services, when you talk about the cost of your services, you're letting people self-evaluate and self-select what they need. Again, as opposed to getting them excited, getting them to take action, and then being a human and having a conversation with them. This is the true pass out between marketing and sales, uh, right? It's, it, it, this is what we want to be focusing on as marketers is getting as many people into our salespeople's calendars as possible and then letting them do their thing, letting them sell. So that's why uh, I don't fully believe in service pages. Again, I'm not going to tell you not to use them. It's just my two cents on it. So just a quick final summary here on the website. As I said before, sometimes you got to cut the branches for the tree to grow. So things we want to focus on, clear call out of prospects pain point, how we'll resolve that pain point, proof of resolved pain points, and book conversation about prospects pain points. These are the four elements that you need to cover on your website. Uh, that's pretty much it. And this includes all the SEO stuff, right? We don't need to talk because you're a B2B website. You don't need 100 million pages, right? A lot of your traffic is going to come through content. So as long as you have a blog, that's fine. We don't need anything else. We don't need some crazy website structure. You don't need some crazy knowledge base. You can do all that if you want. I'm not going to tell you not to, but I'm telling you if you're struggling, you should look to strip it down as opposed to build it up. So pillar number two here, if you will, is content, right? And not just content, best in class content. I talked about this before. One of the reasons why you're struggling is because you're using the same generic strategies that everyone else is using, right? Creating blog content is just not enough. It's just not going to push you up to the level that you want to be at. That's not why you're here. We need to make you a thought leader and I can help you do that. But we need to start by doing that by looking at content as the glue between all of your marketing efforts, right? That's actually led by SEO teams because SEOs are just really good with content. We've been doing it for a while. And if you have the level of strategy and understanding that we do, and that we're going to talk about here, I'm going to show you how you can take this strategy and push it across everything and really distribute it and get it in front of the right people. And again, become that thought leader, not necessarily at a global level, but to the people that matter to your customers, right? We want them to see you as an authority in the space, somebody that again, they know that you can solve their problems. So let's talk about that. Just a supporting quote to give you more ammo for what I'm talking about here. 96% of B2B buyers look for content backed by thought leaders. We already know why, right? You know that you do the same thing too. It's actually probably one of the reasons why you're here, right? I have content all over the place, YouTube, uh, guest posts, podcasts everywhere that help funnel you and make you actually want to listen to me and take my advice. And if you listen to me and take my advice, then there's a good chance that we'll have a sales conversation. You'll become a customer, which I would love to do, by the way. So this is just kind of further data to show you that content is not just to be published on your blog. It's to be help build your company into authority inside of your space, especially with your customers. So let's break down content a little bit. We have a very simple strategy when it comes to really just all content and marketing. It's content and promotion. Those two pillars, those are two things that we like to focus on, right? Like what content do we need to create? And then how do we get in front of your target customers? So let's look at that a little bit more here. So when we look at content, Again, we'll break it down into the traditional marketing funnel, top funnel, mid funnel, bottom funnel. The reason why we do this is because it helps us to understand the intent behind content. It also helps us to understand the distribution behind the content, right? Top funnel content can live on the blog. Maybe we can promote it with some Facebook ads to cold audiences. Mid funnel content here, this is going to be like webinars, et cetera, something that's a little bit meatier, something that's getting people to convert. This is also something that we can use as remarketing on Facebook or across social media networks, right? And then bottom funnel is generally going to be more of your conversion focused content, right? <clears throat> So for example, top funnel, just think value add, right? Like how can we add value to our customer, right? And what this really comes down to too is understanding who your customer is. Like what you're going to notice here is we're not talking about keywords here, are we? We're talking about business results because at the end of the day, one of the reasons why content doesn't generate leads for you is because you just built it based off keywords, right? You took what your SEO agency said. They were like, hey, these keywords are what people are searching for, but is it your customer? Number one is, and is it something that's actually helping your customer? Once you can understand who your core customer is. It's just about understanding the nuances in where they're hanging out, how they like to consume it, uh, et cetera, right? Which we're gonna talk about a little bit more too. So this is really kind of how we break down content. Again, we look at it in three stages and we understand that each one of those stages has a different intent or a different goal or a different problem that we're trying to solve for our customer, right? So again, top funnel is gonna be value adding content, mid funnel is gonna be results focused content, uh, case studies, webinars, uh, you know, just chronicling results that you've gotten for clients, customers, and then bottom funnel is gonna be all your offers, right? And then after we have this, we just push this into the promotion cycle. So let's break down each one of these stages in a little bit more. And again, I need to say something real quick too. So we don't, we use keywords, keywords are important, but before that we build a strategy Keywords are a way to help us to understand kind of the universe of what people are searching for, right? It doesn't necessarily map directly to the problems that we're trying to solve for your customer, right? Because a lot of times some of those problems or people are, they might not be searching for them. Uh, and that's the thing too, is understanding that search isn't the end all be all search is a part of your distribution channel. So we take more of a jobs to be done 
content creation approach where we're looking at solving problems, uh, not just, you know, building content off keywords. Um, so with that being said, let's talk a little bit more about what goes into top funnel content. This is going to be the first touch point with your brand. Uh, we want to make sure that we're connecting positively. We're adding value. Uh, this is always going to be industry or audience related. Again, understanding who our core customer is and what, what entices them, what engages them, what's interesting to them. What are they talking about? How can we stop their scroll on Facebook, if you will, and get them to pay attention? That's the type of content we want to focus on here. One of the main goals here is to, to warm them up uh, and get them familiar with us. So next time they'll click on our stuff for sure, or they'll be ready to take the next step in terms of the funnel. So some examples that I have here, uh, we have like a segment we call this week in marketing, where we'll basically just go out and grab, you know, marketing headlines and I'll just do a video of it and we'll do a blog post right up very top funnel. Uh, and again, we'll do this for people at the blueprint because SEO agencies are always looking for kind of like tips and advice and news. So we've just kind of rounded that up and done it in a more engaging way and we'll provide that to our audience. We call that this week in marketing. Ask Gary V is another really good example of this very top funnel. Um, you know, Gary's audience is so broad that his content is so very broad. So it's, that's a tough one to look at. Like if you're going to use that model, you've also really got to understand where you are. Gary's operating in another stratosphere in terms of his audience. So his content is going to be very broad, right? When it comes to this week in marketing, you can see there's a kind of, kind of similar topics here, right? In a sense or, or strategies, if you will, but this week in marketing is clearly focused towards marketers, especially how we deliver it uh, in terms of the stories and the, the headlines that we're bringing to people. They're curated in a sense that we're building it for our audience and we're building it in a helpful way that we know is going to help them. Uh, roundups and listicles are another good one. So like, you know, uh, 10 ways to position your business. Um, you know, I don't know, 10 roofing styles <laughs> that are in vogue, uh, in, in Florida right now. I don't know, something along those lines. This is one from our agency blog, uh, Webris link 19 link building strategies that work in 2021. So again, very top funnel, um, very kind of interest based, but also very helpful, uh, very problem solving too, because we're helping them understand which link building strategies. But whenever you see this number in front of it, um, you know, audiences know that they're a little bit more skimmable. They're a little bit more engaging. Um, and you know, they're not going to have to spend two hours reading it. They can kind of get in and out of there and we can just build that connection and touch point. So this is actually a really good example of how, if you're only looking at your data analytics, a page like this is always going to have a high bounce period. It just is, especially from search because people are going to come here they're going to find what they need and they're going to leave. So if you're just looking at bounce rate as a KPI of how your organic is performing and how your content is performing, you're doing yourself a disservice because again, every time somebody comes here, they could be spending 20 minutes on this page. Bounce rate doesn't account for that, but we're building our remarketing audiences. You know, maybe they opted into our webinar from here. Maybe they followed me on social media. So we're helping this to build our ecosystem. And again, the beautiful thing about search is it does this in perpetuity and it grows and scales over time in a wave, in a sense that like you can't even try to measure it if you wanted to. You just almost got to look at an old school, like how you'd be looking at the impact of a billboard uh, and just on your overall brand and your overall sales and that as well. So not talking about mid funnel, you know, this is a little bit more down the funnel. This is where we want to add a little more technical strategy uh, value. Um, so things like deeply detailed guides, interesting case studies, right? So, you know, deeply detailed guides could be, again, if we're talking about Webris, you know, a uh, complete guide to link building or like complete guide to doing link building internally. That's a very important nuance too, is that, um, you know, we partner with companies to help them bring link building in house. We're not doing it for them, right? So uh, we want to make sure that we're tailoring our topics to the audience that we're trying to attract. So again, the difference between how to do link building, how to outsource link building, how to bring link building in house uh, are all very different in their intent, right? And in their nature. And we want to understand that based on who we're trying to target. It's a huge mistake that companies make all the time. So they'll create content again, based on keywords and not adapt those keywords to their audience because there's no volume there when it doesn't matter again, because if you're only looking at keywords, then you're missing out on the distribution value of other channels, which I'll show you in just a second. So real case studies here too, you know, you know how we helped X company do X or grow X or save X. Um, these usually pay, play very well. Uh, again, that you can rank in organic search and also do other things. Comparison guides are really good here too, right? So depending on where you are, if you're like a software company, um, you know, comparison guides play very well because again, if you think about where somebody is, if they're looking for comparison guides between two softwares, between two vendors, they're in the funnel, they're deep, they're searching. So if you can capture that traffic, uh, it's very powerful traffic. Example, this is on our blueprint, uh, blueprint website where we help SEO agencies. Um, we have comparison guides between SEO software, Moz versus SEM rush, SEM rush versus Ahrefs. If you think about who's searching for that, it's our exact audience. And they're also in the thought process of, of signing up for pretty expensive software so that we know that they have budget. So it's an amazing qualifier. So we have a post, Moz versus SEMrush versus Ahrefs. Let me just pull it up. 
this ranks really well, you know, drives about a thousand visits a month to the website from organic search. It just compares all the tools, really, really good detailed review. Uh, and again, this is a beautiful post to remark it off the back of, right? So for example, if you know, this is driving a thousand visits per month, uh, and we've got other pieces of software at, uh, articles that we're putting up too, and we get that up to 10,000, 20,000 visits per month, but it's not converting. What can we do? We can set up remarketing ads on Facebook, like still looking for software. We can help. Let's have a conversation, right? Something along those lines. I don't know. That's just the top of my head, but you can see again, how we can use this content, repurpose it and use it through other stages of the marketing funnel, even though like you might be sitting here being like, why do I want this on my website? Well, because everyone who reads this is a customer, a potential customer. That's why you want it on your website. Even if it's not showing up in your data and analytics, it's because you're not taking it far enough in order to get there. So real quick, just on bottom funnel content. So I just look at this as any point of conversion, you know, it could be a webinar, it could be a tool that you're giving away at VSL, it could be just your main business offer here too, your sales page. Um, so this is the type of content that we want to focus on putting at the bottom. Now I have a very important distinction off the back of this because, you know, at the end of the day, this is very confusing. I'm going to walk you through it. Don't worry. But at the end of the day, um, I don't want you to get too trapped up in just kind of intent funnels because to me, what really matters is, you know, I call it like the HubSpot explodes with Gary V model. The HubSpot model is, is their hub and spoke model, right? You come up with a hub topic and then you build spokes off of it. That's a blogging and SEO strategy. It works pretty well. The Gary V model is taking one piece of content and then hacking it up and distributing it on other platforms. So I don't love either one of the models. I think they both need updating, especially Gary V's. Um, but if we merge the two together and look at it through no scope, it's the most impactful thing that you can do for your B2B business right now, period. Any marketing channel, this learning and understanding how to implement this. So I'm going to give you an example based again, on our company, the blueprint training. So what we did is we came up with these three pillars, right? So again, going back to the HubSpot model, they have these hub kind of hub topics that are really, really important to the brand, right? So for us, it's positioning, productization, and marketing. Those are three topics that we know that our audience cares about. We know that they're struggling with, and we know that we can help them with, right? So what we want to do is we want to try and squeeze every single piece of content topic out of this as possible, right? And it doesn't matter if it's just a blog post. We want to get all the value from that topic because we know that if we can help them with three, these three things and we can get it to different platforms, then they're ultimately probably going to become customers if we can connect with them on it. So let's just break down one of these pillars, for example. So positioning, this is how we approach it, right? We're looking at this topic-based, not necessarily platform-based and definitely not just keyword-based. So what we're doing here is we're fleshing out all the different kind of ideas that come with this. So for example, when we look at positioning and we just think about this in terms of written word, right? We can do a complete guide to agency positioning, which we have. We can do 10 reasons to niche down, right? To select a niche for your agency. We can do one on how to craft an offer for your agency or for your business. We can do one on how we grew, um, you know, X, Y, and Z company 150% by repositioning their business, right? So you can see here, I'm going back and these are our multiple stages in the funnel, like we just talked about complete guides. This is your kind of top level roundup. These are going to be your more mid funnel. Uh, and this could be even your bottom funnel if you wanted to attach some sort of offer to it or just mid funnel case study, right? So you can see here how we've taken this one concept of positioning and we've blown this out into different subtopics. Now this is where keyword research comes into play. Then when we're publishing a blog post, of course, the goal here is to rank it in organic search. That's one of the main goals of a blog post. So we're going to do keyword research to support this, to then build out the blog content. But you can see how we started again with that jobs to be done, problem solving things like what are the things that people are interested in off the back of this topic and how, how can we explode this into as many topics as possible? We can blow this into 50 different topics just for this one pillar. And that's just blog content, right? Then you got your blog content, you can go get a writer and get that stuff written. But then we can take that and we can create videos off the back of each one of those topics as well. And even better about this too, what I love about this is you can see I put these in different colors for a reason. So these could go on YouTube and this could be a gated webinar, right? So what I also want you to understand is the difference between topic, medium, and platform. So topic are these, right? These are, you know, the different topics that we'll be talking about. It doesn't matter what medium or what platform, right? Medium is going to be, you know, what we're going to create it on. It's going to be a blog post. It's going to be a video. It's going to be a social media post. It can be a podcast, right? An audio, right? That's, that's medium. And that platform is where we're going to distribute it, right? So this is where things can get really nuanced because when it comes to video, video is a medium, but we can distribute that across so many platforms. We can host it as a private webinar. We can put it on YouTube. We can put it on Facebook, we put it on LinkedIn. But then this is really what kind of where the Gary Vee model comes into play is understanding the nuances between those platforms, right? How does the medium of video play on LinkedIn versus Facebook versus YouTube? 
I know how it does. I can tell you how it does. I can consult you on how it does. I, I'm not going to go into it here because you got to pay me for something. But I know exactly what that looks like. And I know exactly how to cut it up. The, the error with the Gary Vee model is he says, hey, take one piece of video and hack it up and push it everywhere, right? Take a LinkedIn, take a 30 minute webinar that you made and hack it up and put it on Twitter and, and Instagram. It's not the right way to do it. You actually have to create platform, create content for that specific platform. That's why this model is so important because we can understand the core topic and then we can say, okay, like how do we take this how do we take this uh, complete guide and how do we tr translate that to Twitter? Do we just promote a link? You could, or do we turn that into a tweet store, right? How do we take this complete guide and how do we translate that to LinkedIn? We could post a link, we could, it's gonna have minimal results, minimal efforts, or we could write that, we could take a copywriter and turn it into a long form organic post on LinkedIn, right? These are the nuances. This is the difference between good and great. This is the difference between good and world class and best class. This is why you're not positioning yourself as a thought leader because you're taking your blog posts and you're just dumping it across your social networks thinking that people wanna click on a link. They don't. People are on Twitter for a specific reason. People are on YouTube for a specific reason. People are on LinkedIn for a specific reason. People are using Google for a specific reason. You have to understand the nuances. If you don't, your content is going to continue to fail and the rest of your marketing efforts with it. So that's kind of my my i'll get off my soapbox now and uh we can move on to the next part of the presentation but this really is everything like this is the most important thing for your business right now in 2021 and beyond is understanding content how to ideate how to ideate it how to create it and how to distribute it that's the name of the game the final thing that we need to talk about is link building so if you are not familiar with link building um it's still probably the most important part when it comes to seo um the key here is understanding where you are in your link journey, how much authority you have, how many links you have, the quality of links, how many competitors uh, that you have that are kind of outranking you when it comes to links, and what are the best mechanisms for you to get it. So this is where a lot of SEO agencies fail, right? And this is what I was talking about too, about you not understanding what should be done in-house versus what should be done with an agency. When it comes to content, you know, you can use an agency to help out with strategy, you can use an agency to help out with keyword research, but you got to own that process. Like you can't rely on an agency to do all that for you because you're either going to pay them way too much or they'll just never get it done. It's just too much work. You got to get somebody internally and we can help you get that person and train that person. That's part of what we do here. Um, links is another one, right? An agency can only do so much for you. You're either going to pay way too much where the ROI makes no sense at all to get like high quality PR links or you're going to pay an agency to get you crap links. Either way, it's not an ideal situation. So what you have to do is understand the medium. What should be done by an agency and what should be done in-house? And what that starts with is understanding where your position is. So there's a, a platform called uh, Hrefs. And if you're not familiar with links, by the way, it's basically just the process of another website linking to yours. Like if Huffington Post writes an article about the 10 best attorneys and you're an attorney and they link to you, that link counts as a vote from Google. The more of those that you can get, the more high quality, the higher that you're going to rank and the better that you're going to perform. So it starts with understanding kind of where your website is at. And very simply, ahrefs.com, you can dump in your website and you'll see these two numbers here. DR stands for domain rating. This is kind of like on a scale of zero to 100, how high quality your website is. If your website is under 10, hire a PR company because you need high quality, high authority links. Um, and again, we can kind of work with you on that process of what it looks like to work with a PR company, how you should manage them, et cetera. If you're under 25, um, that's where you can start, you know, building a little bit more links aggressively. I'm gonna walk you through some link types for you. And if you're over 50, then you can just, you know, pretty much build the, the type of links that you need to specific types of pages, right? And again, I can walk you through all this if you wanna jump on a call. It's just too much information to cover here. So some of the things that I do wanna run you through are, are the types of links. So this is a PR link, right? We actually hired a PR company for this. Um, they got us featured on a bunch of local websites because we wanted more local press. We paid a couple thousand bucks, got a couple features. Um, you know, PR is tough because it's expensive. It's something that if you can bring in house, I can help you to bring that in house too if you have the right staff for it. Um, but it's very impactful because what it does is it builds a base, base, base. I'm telling them from Spain. And build a base of, of links and build that authority and then build that credibility with Google because PR links are the highest quality links that you can get, right? There's a difference between a PR link and an SEO link. A PR link is like abc.com, Huffington Post, and an SEO link is like from a blogger on a, on a post, right? They're both impactful. You need both of them, but PR, you need a good base of PR before you start getting aggressive with SEO link building. Another great one is podcast. This is something that you can definitely bring in house, right? Basically what we do is we can help you coach you and train you on how to build a list of podcasts, how to write a good pitch, and then how to pitch somebody internally, your CEO, uh, a thought leader internally, all based on the topics that we talked about. Remember that we're actually going through a process now where we're pitching positioning to podcasts about for agencies. We built a list, we sent them an email. Hey, my name's Ryan. 
I have, oh, perfect. I have a pitch right here. I got a story for you. Hey, I'm reaching out in regards to your podcast. I'd love to be a guest on your show. Let me tell you why I'm an entrepreneur, uh, a bunch of different kind of different value propositions here. Very straightforward. Build a list. There's websites that you can literally scrape uh, the contact information from all podcasts and just fire off emails. And again, this is part of turning yourself into a thought leader and thinking more about than just SEO and links. Getting on a podcast is good for your business. It's good for your brand. It's good for your authority. It's good for your reach. It's also a really good source of links for SEO. So you can see here too, how I'm trying to get you to think about how we can kill multiple birds with one stone and not just get stuck uh, building SEO links and building SEO content and building ad content, right? If we can integrate these things and we can build this, this thought processes, problem solving skills internally at your company, you're going to make a lot more money a lot faster. Another great one is guest posting. So this is something we can also coach with you and work with you on to understand what type of websites should you be contact contacting on a monthly basis? What type of topics should you be pitching? Hint, hint, they're all going to be the same for your content strategy, just rewritten in a different way, right? So this is how PR works. This is how speaker campaigns work, right? If you've ever worked with a PR company to like promote a book or go on a speaking tour, they take one topic and they pitch it over and over and over again. They just spin it in different ways. It's exactly what we're doing here. So if you've got a writer, then... You can literally hire a writer just to do this. If you don't have a writer, you should really hire one because you're not going to be able to do this, but we can help you do that as well. But you can literally just get a writer to go to Google and find guest post websites that are authoritative, they're relevant, your audience is hanging out there, they pitch the post, they write the post, they link to your website, they get exposure. Very straightforward. Do a couple of those per month. So another good one is resource page links. Um, this would be one where, you know, you just type of like best of. So like, for example, we got featured on a bunch of like best SEO training courses. How did we do that? We searched for best SEO training courses. We took the articles and then we pitched the author of the article said something like, Hey, we, uh, we met a while back. If you met him, if not, uh, I'll get to the point. Just read your article on best SEO courses, recently launched a course the platform was called blueprint training. They'd be a perfect fit. Now I realize how much work it is to go back in and edit articles. So I'm willing to do all the following, write a section for you, promote your article on my Twitter, uh, give you access to the platform, right? Why is that important? Because just like anything in life and business, link building is about the exchange of value. You can't just expect to send an email to someone and have them do work for you for free. There's, it needs to be an exchange of value. That exchange of value can either be, Hey, I'm going to promote it to my audience. Uh, Hey, I'm going to pay you for it, uh, or I'll contract you to do it. Uh, but figuring out what that looks like. Again, these are things that we can coach you on. We can consult you on to understand and build these templates for you with you. Uh, so you understand exactly what to pitch to get links featured. So I just gave you three link types right there that you can do internally with the pitches. Very simply, very straightforward podcast guest post, uh, and getting featured on best of lists. And the final one here is just the straight up pitch, right? So we'll actually do this. Uh, we'll work with clients and we'll help clients to do this as well. Um, but literally just finding a bunch of relevant websites and just sending a, a pitch with, has some support value, like straight up. This is what I'm looking for straight up. Here's what's in it for you. Can we do this or not? You know, and if we can build this internally, right? So let's take a step back. Let's go back to the beginning here. Links are important. You need them to rank your website. Uh, no matter what stage you're at, there's different strategies in terms of it being applied, different link building tactics to do that. If you pay an agency to do this for you, they're going to charge you too much or they're going to do a very low quality job. However, there is a happy medium where we can help you to build this internally. You really just need one person. If that's a contractor, that's fine. We can get a writer to do all this link building for you. We can train them, we can coach them, and we can get them building you know, five to eight really, really high quality links for you per month for a lot less than you'd be paying an agency to do it. Now you own this in-house. Now you're saving money on it. Now you're building knowledge internally. Now you're building the business. Now you're integrating channels. Now you're building IP internally, right? And then as an agency, we can also build some links for you at a, just a per link cost to supplement it, to make sure that all the pages that you have are getting the right links needed, right? Same thing with content. We can help you with a strategy. We can help you uh, to build the keywords. We can help you to do all these things, but we also want to work with you and work with your team. So you know how to do this in the future, right? Because again, there's certain things that if you rely on an agency to do for the rest of your existence, they're either going to charge way too much or you'll lose money, or you're not going to get the results that you need. At a certain point, you got to bring this IP in house and we can help you do that. So look, here's my pitch and here's my offer. We have a growth specialist standing by to have a conversation with you about your business, about your website, about everything that we just talked about and how we can take this everything that we talked about here, this exact framework, this exact strategy and apply it to your business to not only get more traffic, but to get more leads. There's a link right below this video. You can book a time that works best for you. And we'll talk about everything about your website and your business. So hopefully you take me up on that offer. Uh, we're standing by and we're really looking forward to meeting you. Hopefully I'll talk to you soon.